<clears throat> hey guys, you caught me mid the uh, <clears throat> cough fire when the uh, oh, when the vid came out. Today is Sunday, October thirty first, two thousand ten. Day three hundred four on our Project Jesus three sixty five. Guys, I got a huge smudge on my glasses. Let me clean that first so I can see what I'm doing. You know, I don't care what nobody says. I think glasses make your eyes weaker. I think the eye care industry, the people that sell glasses, the ophthalmologists, I think that's something they won't admit to. But I, Because when I first started wearing these glasses, I didn't even really need them. Uh, I just, I've got a astigmatism in my right eye and it was making me like when I would drive and stuff for long distances like when we would go to Tennessee or something you know to our, our place down there um, I would get a headache my head would hurt and stuff you know but as far as being able to see seemed perfect you know um, and so I went to the eye doctor and they made me a pair of glasses and at first I just said well I, I'm gonna wear them I won't wear them all the time well I started wearing them, and which I admit I did see a little bit better with them. I mean, I guess my eyes were a little bit worse than I thought. But now that I've got used to them, you know, I can take my glasses off right here, you know, and you know, it's just, it's amazing how, how your eyes get used to looking through that that magnification and uh, and that glass, and uh, you take them off and you can't already see nothing. Uh, of course, I could probably go a week and not wear them, and my eyes would get back. And I've actually thought about doing that sometime because I've noticed like when I go all night, you know, I take them off when I sleep. When I wake up in the morning without them, I can see pretty good. You know, I, I it's not blurry like when I take them off right now. So, but anyway, guys, I don't know how I get off on that tangent. I'm sorry I wasted two minutes of your life on that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if you can tell on TV, I guess not. It's back on. Or it's not back on yet. I've been watching FX has been showing some scary movies this week. And I tell you, that's the only thing I like about Halloween. Well, it's really nothing to do with Halloween. But I like that some of the channels show some scary movies. Around Halloween, I do like a good scary movie. But that's the point. Good scary movies. I tell you, there, there are no good scary movies anymore, I don't think. Um, I've seen some of the dumbest scary movies I've seen in my life here in the last couple of weeks. Getting close to Halloween. Let's see what was one of them. Cloverfield. I don't know if you guys have seen that. That's that's horrible. Uh, or I think it is. The movie that's on right now, Prom Night, I think. You know, FX has been advertising all this big scary Fright Night, you know, and all these big scary movies. They've had Cloverfield, Prom Night, which is ridiculous. The Event, that's probably the worst movie I've ever seen. That's the Talladega Nights. Um, but... Uh, what did I say? The event. Yeah, that's just. Whew. I tell you, it's, that movie's just horrible. Uh, uh, Shudder. That's another one that I've tried to watch a couple times, and I just. They're just not any good anymore. I don't know. I don't. Nobody knows how to make a scary movie anymore. Anyway, guys, let's see. What else? Uh, same old, same old, guys. Uh, had a good. Good church service today. Didn't have a whole lot of people there. I think we had about 20, 25 or 27 or something like that. A decent crowd, you know, not too low, but um, had a good time, though. Had a had a guy there that came a couple times that, that can sing, and uh, every time he comes, we ask him if he wants to sing, and he does. And I tell you, son, he can really bail her. I tell you, now he can sing. Uh, he sang a couple songs for us, and we had a good time. And... Uh, had a good day, you know, come home and had to do some church-related stuff, uh, visit some people, that kind of deal. Uh, come home, my sister and my nephew were here, so me and him, I got out some of the bullets that I've loaded, you know, that I needed to test load, you know. Me and him got out and, and uh, shot them, and he shot my 10 millimeter for the first time. He really liked it. Uh, I think he, he thought it was going to scare him, you know, he thought, uh, cause it, you know, it does pack a pretty good wallet and not only does it kick pretty good, it, um, it's just loud and it's violent. You know, you can feel a big concussion hitting you from that compensated barrel and, uh, he thought it was going to scare him. So, uh, he shot it four times. I, he told me not only, 
load him up two or three rounds in it, so I think I put four in it. He shot those four, and he said, load me another magazine. You know, he was tickled to death. So, uh, shot the Mosquito, shot. You know, people were ag on them guns, say they're junk. I'd say I've already shot right at 100 rounds to the gun, and I've not had one hang up. But now you got to run good ammo. They're like any 22 now. Uh, these modern 22s, especially the semi-automatic pistols, especially, you have to run good ammo through them. As long as you're not a tight wad, and as long as you'll run decent ammo through them, CCI or something like that, they'll run all day. Uh, and mine actually had the soft spring in it. Set up for the generic ammo, it would have probably ran it too. You get two springs when you buy it. Uh, and I just got done cleaning it and I put the stiffer spring in it because I run the good ammo. Uh, but the gun has been flawless so far. Uh, shot my MP, Smith & Wesson MP40. Uh, my nephew really likes that gun. He shot it more than any of them, probably. And he, which I put a green laser on it and he liked that laser. He likes that gun too. He's always liked that gun. Uh, when I first got it, he shot it some and loved it. But I guess that's about it, guys. Uh, same old stuff been going on. Uh, I just want to ask you guys to pray for me. Uh, you know, like I told you guys, uh, you know, my payday is pretty much already gone. You know, by the time I picked that gun up and and uh, paid my tithes at church and that kind of deal. Uh, and I got to go to the wind, dentist Wednesday, so pray that pray that he can get by with filling that tooth and not doing a root canal. Not only do I not want to go through the pain and everything, you know, I just don't know if I can afford a root canal. You know, I may, if he does have to do a root canal, I may have to ask him, say, well, can you take payments on it? You know, because, uh, you know, my Snap-on man runs Tuesday, and it, as of right now, I don't even have the money to pay him, let alone pay the snap on man and then go to the dentist Wednesday and spend four or five hundred dollars so you guys just pray for me pray for me that that the Lord will let that tooth be just filled and uh, either way just pray uh, pray that something will happen I know it will the Lord's always faithful uh, let's see guys I guess that's it so we will get to the important part now and that is of course God's word uh, oh yeah one more thing while well, I got time I forgot to, I, I, I told you guys I was going to tell you this so I am when I was talking, was talking about the story that when I was talking about hearing God's voice, sometimes the story I was going to tell on about Dad, um, and I'll try to make this kind of quick. Years ago, Dad actually built our local racetrack that we've got around here. He actually built it in 1969, the the dirt racing track, and then uh, in 1991, him and a group of investors got together and bought it back. He had he had got out of it years before that, sold it. Him and a group of investors bought it back, bought it, and built a drag strip on it. So, he, so it's one thing I'm kind of proud of. You know, Dad, he, he, like I said, he built both the local racetracks around here. Um, but anyway, it, this was like in 90, probably 92, 93, I guess I was in a freshman in high school, somewhere through our sophomore maybe. Um, he, he had him a little Dodge Dakota company truck. Had, well, it was his truck. But he had the racetrack name and stuff on it. Well, anyway, he was going to the next county over um, to go to the TV station, our local TV station, and run some ads or something. And uh, he got local uh, little place to get him something to eat. And uh, and, the, and back at this time, especially, guys, nobody hardly wore seat belts. I mean, I've always worn them. Mom, Mom always harped on me to wear them, and I always have. But especially back in this time, nobody hardly wore them. And Dad never wore a seat belt. I mean, up to this time, he said the only time he'd ever wore a seatbelt was in a race car. Uh, so anyway, never, ever, ever wore a seatbelt. Was pulling out to go to this TV station, and he said it was just like somebody sitting in the passenger seat with with him said, son, put on your seatbelt. And that said, and I asked him, you know, later, I said, Dad, did you just feel that or... Or here at your mind, I said, was that an audible voice? He said, no, it was an audible voice. Like somebody sitting next to me. A matter of fact, he said, you know, I looked around kind of thinking somebody was standing outside the window of the truck or whatever. He said, you know, and there was nobody there. He said, son, put your seatbelt on. So he put his seatbelt on. You know, he says, well, I better, I better do it. You know, I think dad knew what was happening. So anyway, he gets over in, in the next county there right before the radio or the TV station. 
there's a caution light there. Guy coming through her and his wife with holding a baby. Thank the Lord everybody was okay. In a 78 Ford LTD, dad running 55, 60 miles an hour, they running 55, 60 miles an hour. This guy was fiddling with his radio or something, I think, come to find out. Crossed the center line, wham, hit dad. Dad head out, right, I can't even speak. Hit dad head on in dad's lane. And dad's truck actually went up in the air so much, he said he can remember looking up and looking down through the windshield and seeing this woman holding this baby. Well, I'll tell you how hard they hit. It knocked the engine out of this 78 Ford LTD. It, it was like a 460, I think, engine in it. Had a big block in it of some sorts. Knocked the engine out of it. Bent the frame on Dad's little truck, which we actually we ended up fixing that truck back. That show Dodge Dakotas are tough little trucks, I tell you. But that's a different story. But anyway, uh, nobody was hurt seriously. Uh... But Dad knows to this day that it would have killed him if he hadn't had his seatbelt on. It would have threw him out and probably the cars rolled over him and ran over him. Uh, and he knows it was the Lord talking to him. I mean, he knows it. I've heard it too. I, I could tell you a story about the Lord telling me one day in a car to save my life, telling me some things. So, But anyway, guys, that's the story. I hope y'all liked it. And uh, now let me get to the real important part, and that's God's Word. I'm going to try to hurry, guys, because this video is already long. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed that what thou doest, for this man is Roman. Guys, I hope I'm in the right spot. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, with a, great, with a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. Then straightway they departed from which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid, and he knew that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would have known the certainty, wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed from his bands and commanded the chief priest and all the council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. Guys, I know I only read about six verses there. Hope you guys will excuse me. I just this video's been so long, but you know, I, I think the the testimony of Dad's story there, I think that's worth the, the little bit of scripture I had to cut short. Uh anyway, guys, I gotta get off here. Uh hope you guys will forgive me for cutting it short. Pray for me. Pray that business will be good enough this week. You know, like I said, guys, I, I'm already in the financial hole. <laughs> but I know the Lord's gonna take care of me. Uh uh, pray that my dentist stuff will go good, that, that he won't have to do a root canal on that tooth. And uh, pray that business keeps holding up enough. And uh, pray for my family, pray for my church. I'm praying for you guys. I love you all. Good Lord willing, I'll be here tomorrow night. So until I see you guys again, good night and God bless.